We're back on Carlos. We're back on the Baby Got Back 9-11. We're back on the 9-11 WBBD. <laughs> We're back on the 9-11 Wide Body Backdate Project. I'm gonna say that again because a name has not settled in quite yet. We, I appreciate all your comments last video on what we should name this. We're gonna have to keep workshopping this, guys. So last week, we got the front bumper fitted up and the bumper ends flared through some metal fabrication. This week, we're jumping to the back side of the car. We're gonna get the rear bumpers fit up. This is a back date, so much like the front, it's gonna be a bunch of work to get the bumpers to be actually mounted to the car, look right, and then we're gonna have to flare them like we did to the front as well. So before I do anything here, I need to get the car up in the air and leveled out. So enjoy a sick montage. Do you like one of the NBCs like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater? Like, yeah! Oh no, dude. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so, what we're working with is with these bumpers. These are OEM bumpers, we're called, I guess, because they're called bumpers. I, Let's say bumper extensions, but they're not actually bumper extensions, are they? They're actually bumpers now. They're bumpers. I'm just saying bumpers so many times, it doesn't <laughs> matter. So these are OEM bumpers on the 911, um, and the original mounting tabs go a whole way back, and there's bolts that go up through. And uh, I can't physically do that anymore because this is a modern car that had the shocks, bumper shocks. What? Modern. <laughs> More <laughs> modern than this. 1974 design. <laughs> More modern than the 1960s design. Correct. Yes. Um, yes, I understand what you're saying there, though. <laughs> um, furthermore, what I'm thinking is I'm going to cut it, basically cut it back and make a whole new bracket that ties in, and then we can bolt to the uh, bolt holes here for the clamp that was originally for the bumper shock. Could that can replace that. That's what I'm thinking. We just gotta figure out the logistics on how to do that. And also I gotta cut this out so we can actually, you know. Put it back. Put it back to where it needs to be. Which means I gotta drill some spot welds. And we'll still have to cut off that tow hook. Good reference right here. Here's a pre-backdated car. Also known as not a backdate. <laughs> just a date. <laughs> so yeah, so this piece holds the rubber and there's a rubber, rubber seal. Right. Yep. That's that what we're imitating. To, yeah, yep. so I'm just gonna, yeah, it's like the car back, I guess, to. Yeah, we gotta get rid of what Porsche added for the rear reflector to there. We yeah. can go look at that car over there and see what it looks like without that panel in place. But Yeah, so on this one, which is, you know, deconstructed currently. Um, which is why we're looking at it. it was exactly, it's perfect, perfect stage to look at. You'll see, like, so the panel in the center of there, the black panel, goes up through here and it, like, sleeves over these mounts to be held into place, so like the center latch, what do you call that, like uh, License plate panel. License plate panel? So this, the license plate panel is held up by the bumpers actually, not the body of the car, which is interesting. So we need to make sure that all of that aligns correctly and gaps with the car. I like to mark my spot welds before I go through and grind them, just so in case I lose where they're at. But I'm noticing how like, okay, this is relatively consistent here, right? It's about like every, maybe inch, inch, inch and a half, something like that, I don't know, I don't do standard measurements. But then back through here, look at that, there's like two there, there's a big jump to there, there's one there, like it just gets all wonky, up and down, and we, I don't know who, who assembled this in that day, but they were, it must have been Friday. <laughs> Sometimes the Porsche stuff is extremely consistent, like, like my right here with the quarter pan, I can see it's like bop, 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 all the same space. And other times it's just willy-nilly, and this is more of a willy-nilly part right here. It's okay. They're coming off anyway. Oh. 
cover me, I'm reloading! Like, I do like the whole like, the Gears of War, like when you're like, <laughs> like the over the shoulder thing, you know? <laughs> Dense bracketry right there. I think that is. I guess it really was a tow hook. Dang, that sounded solid. <laughs> The way they'd be, they're stamped aftermarket quarter panels and they're not perfect. Like anything that's metal pre stamped, you have to modify it to be yep, what you want. What you want. Or, or what the car needs. Both, yeah, yeah, what you want or need, exactly. Right, so, yeah. what I want and need is to cut that off and re flange the bottom so that it's. Tell me what you want. That's what, what you I really, want. Really, really want. That's what I really want. Because <laughs> I want a perfectly crisp line across yeah. the whole bottom of the car, or bottom, between but, the bumper yeah. and there. So that's a big detail part, part of the car. All right, so before I get too far ahead of myself here, there's something I need to address. These flares are aftermarket flares that we welded onto the car. And any aftermarket pre-stamped metal that you buy typically is not perfect and it needs adjustment. Well, this is the point where we make our adjustment because where this meets the bumper, as you can see, it's not perfectly level. And when I installed these flares, I made sure they're identical side to side and they fit to the form of the vehicle fully relaxed. So that's not really on me, that's more so on the part itself. Now, another thing I don't like about this flare is how these corner, the corner here is actually really radius. Like when you go this way, it's really soft and it should be sharp, which will make it look a lot more like smoother and crisper at the end product. So what I'm gonna do here is I have a laser level across here, which is and the car itself is also leveled. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark where the laser comes across here, perfectly level to the ground. We're going to then cut this off and then weld a new flange onto the edge, much like we did in the front when we made that front bumper flare. Uh, I'm gonna do that on both sides so that we have a good point to start off of that matches the rest of the car here. And then when I make the bumper pieces, everything's copacetic because we want to have a really firm, solid base to start with. I just burped when I said that. Look how terrible these scissors are. They're literally tearing the paper. They're not cutting it, it's tearing it. These things are literally junk. Junk! I, there was a little bit of an outburst there, I'm sorry. <laughs> Much better. So what I did here, well, all right, so what, I, okay, so what I did here was I tacked my piece in the bottom. I left a little bit of overhang on purpose so that I can now grind it back to the exact profile of the piece above, and then I weld it. Bippity boppity boo. We have a nice strand, strand. I had just destroyed what I was gonna say. It do good. Get much better than that. Now to the other side.
I was never going to quit, but I'm always back in my BS the next day. Until we get sponsored. It's just so crispy, <laughs> and it's so hot today. This is not metric. Inches and centimeters. What? Inches and centimeters. What are centimeters? Millimeters? Centimeters are metric. They're not millimeters. Well, they're 10 millimeters right there. That's all millimeters. Okay. It's milli- it... I opened it up and saw inches and I got all, all triggered. Right. Well, well, and centimeters. Better. You said centimeters. Centimeters. <laughs> Why do we use centimeters in this, like the standard world? We don't. I know, but like, so we, we use inches, but why centimeters always on there? Well, it's, not, it's not always on it. It's most measure. commonly on it. <laughs> most carpenters Why are you don't have it so that far? side. No, most carpenters don't have that side. We are at 25, 20, 26 million, 25, 26. It's the same, same difference at this an point. An inch. Is that really an inch? 25.4 is an inch, yeah. So. Yeah, just about. I refuse to use inches. <laughs> That's for the heathens. He only uses the metric system, but not the one with centimeters. Yeah, <laughs> not the one with <laughs> centimeters. Yeah, I'm never gonna live this one down. No. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> that Red Bull I drank is clouding my judgment. I said I, I, I keep saying I'm gonna quit, and here I am drinking Red Bull again. Yeah, you can quit anytime. Yeah, I can quit anytime <laughs> I want. I just don't want. <laughs> Making brackets on things you can't really see is really tough and frustrating. We, we all we all watched me in the last video. Yeah, yeah, and you can't get to it. No. So, yeah. The last one in the last video they did on this car was a bit tougher because I couldn't see it. This one I at least have a nice little window here that I can see, so that, that, that's a bonus. But this one's also harder because the bumper's in three pieces, not one. Right. So, and the tolerance is the width of this, and then the window of this, which is pretty much none. I mean, we're talking like couple millimeters not even like maybe two two three millimeters of tolerance there the tolerance is laser precision which is what we do quite literally yes L -l 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 quite yeah. literally we use lasers and sharks with freaking laser beams This is the worst paint marker I've ever used in my life. Oh. I bet I left it dead. I think it's possible. Oh, that was not a good throw. Dude, it's so close. Look at it. It left a ding. Yeah. All right, this is the last try. All right. <laughs> is this the time he just walks in and he's like... <laughs> Nice. 14 millimeter socket. Nobody uses those anyway. This should give it enough weight. So it's 95 millimeters from this back space here to there, and then 180 to be extended a little bit past the flange back here. So I'm gonna go grab a piece of cardboard and cut out this bracket, 95, 180, and cut this back some. These are my scribbles that no one understands but me. Now it makes sense, right? And then that's gonna get cut off, that's gonna get cut off. So yesterday, I took cardboard, made a bracket for the front bumper of what I think it needs to be. And this morning I came in with Fusion 360, modeled it on the computer. So now we're going from cardboard CAD to computer CAD to getting it cut out with the plasma cutter. We're gonna use Arctroid Plasma CNC and uh, cut the sucker out on here. What 
you'll notice that uh, something joggled and it went like this and it skipped the tooth. Um, that final pass. Uh, oh no. Didn't do what I wanted it to do. Dang. It was perfect till then. I know. It was literally perfect until then. I'm a little bummed about was that. Was it the. Uh, was it the cable bolt, like snagging or? Oh, you know what? I wonder if it did snag. I wasn't watching the cable. Yeah, I didn't. I it didn't might have been that. Either. Darn it! Ah, dang it, dude! Gosh, dang, gummit! Diggity darn! Diggity it. darn it! <laughs> Shoot! <laughs> Shoot! Where's that door? <laughs> ah! Last video on this car, you guys mentioned, why did I not score this before hammering it over? And to answer your question, I don't know why I didn't do that. I should have done that. So, here I am. I love CAD. It makes my life easier. I think that'll work. Watch. I'm going to be off of my math, and this is going to get in the way of the bracket. But maybe not. Dude, it barely gets in the way. Dang it! Uh, I should have cut this up a little bit higher. I was wanted, I wanted to have as much meat as possible so that it would, uh, you know, be meaty. Yeah. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. I can cut that. So I think what I'll do actually is I'm gonna cut that off, and then maybe I can actually use that as a point to weld it to as well. So I'm gonna weld this bracket to that. Mm -hmm. So the more support, the better. I'm gonna weld it. If I weld it here to the bottom of that, and then this is overextended, so wherever I cut it back to, uh, plug weld it here. So it's welded here and welded there. That should be plenty of points of contact to keep this thing from you know being weird. And then I'll gusset this in the inside and weld that on the outside there, and it should be plenty strong. Oops. Yeah. Don't breathe this. Mm -hmm. Stop. It's like incense, but it causes cancer. Now the one side's done. Gonna make the other bracket. This time, I made that notch I needed, and I threw in a little bonus of our logo. Let's see how that goes.
and just like that, I got a bracket. I left the uh, logo in this orientation because you know it matches the shirt here, which is facing the in, like it's in the inside of the bumper. So you take the bumper off, you'll see it because when it's on the car right now without no bumper, it's gonna be ah. backwards. But you know that's because it's gonna be the bumper's gonna be there. <laughs> It's perfect level right now. The laser is right here. This is the bracket here that it sits on. I don't know, it's right here on the tip of this one too. Same percentage, percentage of air difference, but still different. I want to hear this stuff and the science that's being explained to me right now. <laughs> Wait, I have more. That sounded a little more like a train whistle, actually. Oh, well, it's funny together. you mention that because I'm printing one right now. Yeah. And there's even a little train on top of it, so you know it's a train whistle. <laughs> Can we just put compressed air through it? Yeah. Some of the code. <laughs> they look like veggie straws. <laughs> oh no. No one used that one. Yeah. We no know, one used any of these. We know they're not veggie straws because Ryan put them in his mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, anyway, so I have the rear bumpers on, and so yeah. I mean, I'm happy with it. I just wanted you to like, I, I want to get multiple sets of eyes right. all over yeah. it, make sure I'm not missing anything. You know. Everything's loose, obviously. I mean, I have two bolts. Holding the bumpers up, the front edges are loose. I have them clamped up against the quarter panel. There's no bumper heads on there. But I mean, so. no, nothing is, you know, which I wouldn't expect. There's no glaring, obvious symmetry problems. Ask him to come over for the first time, <laughs> and he takes a phone Hello? call. And he takes a phone call. How rude! Look at him. Look at him. He's loud. He's leaving. All right. Wants to call. I just want to. I need to throw this door off of it. I mean, we, we, we should do we should do the front mounting points before we start doing the flare. We could do part of the front mounting points because the mounting points are really going to be on the outside edge of the flare. Yeah, yeah that's why. Like, right. right now, yeah. I have a vice grip right here because it just barely grabs. I could do something even temporary there, like a Clico through a tab or something. Oh, I don't know. You know how it is. We want to make sure that it's ending up in the same place every time when we take off the mock oh, yeah. up. So. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But, no, I'm happy with the rat so far because that was a bear. But, yeah. math surprisingly made it easier. <laughs> what? I know. I can't believe it. I know. Also, do you like, do you like the other painting I added to the door? Is it, hole? Is it hiding another hole? I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> so I have this idea. So what we're gonna do is make this profile extend and wrap out and flare, right? Now, this is kind of a complex profile. It looks pretty simple, but we have a tight radius here. It's flat on top, tight radius, a very soft radius that then gets sharper to the bottom. So my idea here is I'm gonna very quickly 3D scan a section of this throw it on the computer, and then through CAD, make a hammer form so that I can tune up a piece this long, roughly, of channel, and then cut it in half and use it for both sides. It'll save time and make it perfect, essentially, without having to uh, use expensive tooling. Or waste a lot of time. I say expensive tooling, like having a 3D scanner isn't <laughs> expensive, but this is like the cheapest 3D scanner ever, so... Take what... <laughs> Use that information as you will. <laughs> Here's my profile. I super simplified it, which is why it's a lumpy, because I don't really need it to be that precise.
it is. I even labeled it to make Tony happy. All it is is a profile for comparison. There's the part of the scan that I used. See? Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. Should be close enough to work off of. And a time saver. For, uh, for more reference, I started scanning this about 15 minutes ago and I already have a 3D model. So, time saver. So the friggin' bed plate shifted mid-print overnight and uh, caused a layer misalignment. As you can see, it's pretty blatantly obvious. It's frustrating because I used 700 grams of filament for this dense print, and uh, that's the last spool I have right now that's new and can actually do this big of a print. Um, I think I can still save this thing by cutting off the excess and using the profile, but dang it's disappointing. Next time I gotta clip my bed down, I guess. I think it's solid. Oh, there you go. It is. Would you like a slice of bread, sir? Yo, look at that goo. grind down the rest here so it's smooth on the working surface and we'll be good to go modern problems require modern solutions and that one actually applies in this team because i 3d printed this <laughs> for once i said it right so i got my piece laid out now we're going to start on the driver's side i'm going to use the table edge to get these these uh radius is started and then after that I'll use my hammer form to refine it that's the plan anyway and we'll see if it actually works out good job for Roger yeah I think it's taking a beating just fine Ow. I think I'll hold up my body that's quite sharp <laughs> Okay, so now that I have my basic profile down and I'm happy with it, I'm gonna have to invoke a bunch of shape to get this to curve the way we want it to go. So what I'm gonna use here is this Lancaster style stretcher and I'm going to put it in the jaws here and I'm going to stretch it. So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but um, these jaws, when I put pressure on them, they expand this way. So they do a linear stretch, it's called. So it's gonna go, when I crank this down, I don't know if you can see in the video here or not, if I crank this down, if you watch, those jaws are gonna spread and push together at the same time, and they're gonna call it a stretch. So if I do this correctly with my years of experience here, quote unquote, um, I should be able to get this to curve this way without ruining the shape I made or the form I made on the uh, main body here. And it makes sense when you see it. All right, so this is what's called a linear stretch die. So earlier I mentioned the Lancaster style shrinker stretcher, which also stretches linearly. It's the same concept, except in this one, you have a, a, an air hammer that goes like this, right? And you have this die in the bottom, which I'm gonna tape so it can't spin. So when this die uh, interfaces with the upper hammer, it's going to call a stretch, but only in these directions because of how the die is shaped which will then cause the piece to curve. Because when I put the piece in here and I stretch along there, it's gonna wanna stretch and push the panel and cause it to kinda curve up like that. So that's what we're gonna aim for right now. And I think this will help me kinda accelerate the process a little bit. Then I'll, I'll probably have to clean it up a little bit afterwards because it's gonna cause some sharp lines maybe. Um, but 
I'm gonna spend all day with that like shot stretcher going like this when I can just use a little bit of a air assisted persuasion. <laughs> Look at that, getting close. On well, top anyway. So I'm hope what I'm hoping I can do now is go back to this hammer form and kind of just fix the peaks of these radiuses or radii, not radiuses. That's what Roger has to say about that. I'm dying today, but I got my potion restoration, but to see how well it actually treats me, I'm gonna roll my D4 here. A two! That's garbage! This coffee is worthless. Oh, it actually isn't even that good. I broke my favorite hammer, look! It's got me in like a different pitch. That's how upset I am, look at that. I was hitting. It's like, huh, it's like clicking really weird. Why is it clicking? I broke my hammer! This is my favorite hammer! <laughs> Where's that door at? <laughs> the fadeaway three. <laughs> it's just stuck in. <laughs> <laughs> I broke it! My hammer broke and I threw it at the door and it's stuck. You're gonna need another painting. <laughs> uh, no, that is the painting. <laughs> it's uh, abstract art. I think that's what they call it. Or yeah. No, actually, no, wait, Logan. It's impressionistic art. <laughs> yeah, it made quite an impression on the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I got floaters in my eyeball, coasters by the shot glass, smoking let my mind fall, plenty roaches, no ass, stepping on the critters, jitters going through my spine, should be used to a state of a poor man's mind, it's just PB no J, huh? Kool-Aid no sugar, boiling a bath, water for warm showers in winter, work cooking, she clean, mama was a magician, she switched it and turned the tub to a washing machine, air drying the clothes, hanging up with my woes, enemies was my friend of me laughing about all my love. But it's on. Greet me with a hay and a wave. Where the real at? These fishermen lines are catching, trying to bring the real back. Guess it's time to bring the real back. Feel that vibe in the air. Fingers are snapping. I am a sinner. Said the saint to the pastor. Baptized by the west side. It's the age of the trapper. You're old enough to enter. Age ain't a factor. So the youngest be strapped. Pointing pistols in classes. I smell fear and a smile. Hit a pain. Focus is hocus pocus when broke is a joke, so. Okay, so we have the upper flare portion roughed in, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I'm gonna hop all fat now, and what we're gonna work on now is the underside. So right now, this part just kind of just runs straight towards the front of the car. It does not flare out. Um, I think what we're gonna do is kind of just move it out just a little bit. I don't want to go crazy and have it like follow this exact radius because it's going to look a little weird, I think, if it's kind of like whoosh, out.
So we got the rear bumper mounted up. We made brackets for that. And we also got this side flared and mocked up. And I'm pretty happy with the outcome. We have it mocked up here with the lens and the rubber in it to kind of see how it fully fits along with the chrome bumperette. So what's coming up next is we have to actually make the other side and get the whole bumper itself cut and welded and all together, which is going to be a process, as well as more things in this car, like the sunroof still needs welded shut, a bunch of other shaving parts. Uh, we gotta make custom rockers for this thing. There's a lot to do yet in this laundry list of a build. All right, let's see it. Ah! Oh! Yeah, it's not, it's, you got finesse, you gotta like. Oh <laughs> no! No! Don't! Don't! Not Roger! <laughs>